On the left, we have a list of openings. On the right, we have a list of players. Welcome to a new series. I will be picking one opening and one player and going through the best game that I can find. In this video, I want to pick the best Benko Gambit game by the man himself, the man who came up with this opening, Pal Benko. I want to look at the game Milan Vukic versus Pal Benko played in 1967. But firstly, who are these two players? Milan Vukic is a Bosnian chess grandmaster. He was champion of Bosnia and Herzegovina. He's currently 77 years old. His current rating 2403, but his highest ever rating 2517. At the time of the game he played against Benko, he was 23. Now, who is Pal Benko? When he played against Vukic, he was 40 years old. He died last year at the age of 91. He was a Hungarian-American chess player. Peak rating, 2530. Pal Benko was also known as a composer of endgame problems. Milan Vukic has white, Pal Benko has black. The game began d4, knight f6, c4, c5, d5, b5. The Benko gambit after white captures on b5, a6. Here we have it. Pal Benko has used it in 27 games in his chess career with the black pieces. B takes a6 and bishop takes a6. What is the purpose of this opening? It is to open the queen side as fast as possible to get queen side play. This bishop is so well placed on a6. I've highlighted the two white pawns on the queen side, the A and the B pawn. They can become future targets for black. But if they are not targets, they are assets because white is a pawn up. White has an extra A pawn. Knight C3, D6, Knight F3, G6. G3 played in this game, but I want to look at E4. This is the modern way of playing. Bishop takes f1, king takes f1, white cannot castle, but he is up an a pawn. I think this is a variation as to why the Benko has lost popularity. Bishop g7, g3. Let's check out a nice game by Carlsen versus Bologov back in 2012 in the Beale tournament. Castle, king g2. White cannot castle, but really he's castled just in a few moves. And the important thing is he has got rid of this very powerful bishop that was on a6. Knight d7, queen e2. Queen b6 and a4. You have an extra pawn. Your asset, so why not use it? Rook b8. Typical placement of the black pieces on the queen side. But why did Carlsen set up in this way with queen e2 then a4? Because he will use the space on the queen side. He will use the b5 square with knight b5. And I think it is because of this setup with the queen here, the pawn here, and the knight here that the Benko gambit may be losing popularity. Knight e8, planning to go to c7, trying to swap off this dangerous knight. And then try to break open the center with e6. Bishop g5. Queen d8, rook a3. Is the rook planning to go along the third? No, it is to get out of the way of the bishop on g7 because after knight b6, b3 is played and this bishop controlling a1, so what? The rook sits well on a3 and later Carlsen plans to reroute this rook. Queen d7, rook a2, f6, bishop back, f5. A typical break in the Benko, trying to break white's pawn center. Take, take, rook d1, knight f6. So even though black has broken up the structure, there are some holes in the black position. Queen e6 check, take, take, knight e4, knight h4, c4, take, take, knight c7. Knight c3, both players' rooks are being attacked and exchange now takes place. Knight takes a8, knight takes a2. Knight back, knight c3, rook d3, rook c8. Knight b5, 
Knight takes b5, a takes, and rook c5. Now, it was possible to go knight takes a4, but then knight takes f5. And white is still up a pawn. So after knight b5, what did Bolagon try? Knight takes, take rook c5. Rook b3. The passed pawn is looking so dangerous. Knight a5, just rook back. Bishop d4, b6. Knight there, rook b4. Bishop takes f2. So what's the idea of rook b4? Attacking the bishop on d4. But also, if you move the bishop, then you can get the bishop in the game. Bolligan goes for a tactic. After rook b4, he takes on f2. King takes. Throw in a check and then take. Notice the rook was on c5. It was guarding f5. Knight takes f5. Check. King g4. Knight c5. b7. And he resigned. It's lost anyway. He didn't need to go knight c5, but... There was an option for white to come into the 8th rank. He could go rook c4, rook a4, and you can't play a move to stop both options. So after knight c5, the pawn is pushed, and that's it. h5 check, doesn't matter, you just go king g5, knight e6 check, king h6, queening next. So a nice victory, but the point of deviating and looking at this is... The Benko is losing some popularity because of this setup. Queen e2, a4, then knight b5. Back to the game, back to 1967. After g6, g3 played. Bishop g7, bishop g2. White goes for a fianchetto, but the bishop on a6 is better than the bishop on g2. Castle, castle, knight d7, queen c2, queen b6. This is the way to put your pieces on the queen side. Rook d1, rook b8, rook b1, and knight e8. The knight plans to reroute to c7, possibly to go to the queen side. Maybe it can go to b5, or it can stay on c7 and then put pressure on the white center. It can break it up with e6 in the future. Bishop g5 and queen d8. Notice the configuration of the black pieces. Very similar to the Carlson game, except for the crucial difference. The light square bishops still exist. Bishop f1. I wonder if players are realizing there's no point in playing bishop g2 because you want to put it back on f1 to swap it off. For black's better bishop, h6, bishop d2, knight c7. b3, controlling c4, giving white the option of going a4, knight b6, White's furthest advanced pawn is d5. Black targets this. e4, take, take, and queen d7. Always play a move that gives you options. I like queen d7 because you can go queen h3. You can play knight b5, trying to swap off your knight on c7. But also we see two pawn break options, typical in the Benko Gambit. e6 and f5. Always play a move that gives you options. Rook e1, king h7, king g2, now he goes for e6. Benko breaks up white center. Take, knight takes e6. After this, black has a plan of going through the center. The knight can go to d4. With support from the bishop on g7 and the pawn on c5, black can play c4 with the support from the knight on b6. Knight e2 played. Controlling d4 with another piece. One option is to play a4. Use your asset. But is it going anywhere? d5, just like in the game, and now a5. I want to look at this line because it's quite an unusual idea. i had never seen before. Rook takes a5, knight takes d5, and the bishop on d2 is now very useful. Attacking the rook, let's tuck it back, and knight f4. Maybe this is a better version compared to the game. You don't want to swap off the knight on e6 with the knight on f4, so let's put it in. Take, take. Bishop b4, and white has a great game. The knight can sit on d3, blockading. The bishop on b4 is now so useful. Back to the game, knight e2 played, and d5. Knight f4. Taking on e4, take, and knight d4. We'll see the difference very soon, comparing this with the game. You may be asking why not queen takes c5, but careful. The bishop is not protected anymore by the queen because it used to be on c2. So we can get rid of the defender with knight takes f3. And after take, the queen can come in. Taking on d2. Knight takes d4. What's the game? C takes. 
if we compare this to the game, white has a white pawn already on a4, and the bishop is already on b4. And there's a white pawn on e4. Just going back to the position in the other line, comparing it with this. There's a pawn on e4, bishop on b4. And comparing it with this, white doesn't have the pawn on e4, and the bishop isn't on b4. White now plays a4. Pause the video if you want to have a go. So far, black has made progress through the center. Now it is time to play where Benko players play best, on the queen side. Can you find a tactic on the white king, but at the same time making progress on the queen side? I'll give you five seconds. The move is queen b7. Pinning the rook to the king, threatening f5. So you have to stop this. You can move the king. White chose f3, and now we use the queenside pressure. Knight takes a4. White's queenside is collapsing. There's a lot of pressure on the b3 pawn. White moves the rook. Queen takes b3. Take, take, rook e7. Attacking the pawn, but we're going to attack something more important. The bishop on d2. Rook e2 played, and now knight c3. Take, take. And bishop on g7 continues to support the d4 pawn. But the d4 pawn has now become a c3 pawn and is further advanced. Rook takes f7 played. Knight d3 is a way to keep the game going. But there's a nice move here. Pause the video if you want to have a go. The move is rook a2. King f1 is the best defensive try. We will look at soon. Knight takes b2 doesn't work because take and we have a promotion discovery coming up. If you go rook b7, you just promote. Double attack. There's a queen and a rook and you can't take both. Rook takes queen, take with check and that is it. After rook a2, if king f1, defending the rooks, let's go g5. Just make progress. King can come to g6. The game goes on. And you still can't take on b2 at the moment. Because c takes b2, it'll be promotion. If you go rook b7, you'll go check first and then promote. Back to the game. White played rook takes f7 and now rook a2. Is game over? King f1 defending. And now let's just attack the defender with g5. Rook takes g7 check played in the game. Just one more chance, rook e7. You don't take the knight, you just use the fact that white's king is too weak. You go check first. Exploiting the back rank, forcing white to go back and then c2. Back to the game, rook takes g7 check played, king takes, knight e6 check, king f6, knight d4, take, take, and now one more move just to be accurate to finish it off. Not c2 because king e1, check, king d2, this is winning because Black can swing over to the king side, picking up the pawns, but it's just a bit more work. So after knight takes e2, you don't push, you check the king first, just to be accurate. Moving the king and then c2, and that is game over. Which opening player matchups do you want to see next? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, why not like it and subscribe at the same time? If you really enjoyed the video, consider a small donation. The link is in the description below. Thank you so much for watching.